Now we have the tools to return to the model we started with, supply and demand. Remember that demand curves capture the consumer's willingness to pay for a good. They slope downwards since higher prices cause consumers to demand less. For example, Apple will sell a lot more iPhones if each iPhone costs $10 than it will if the phone costs $1,000. And now we also know the important technical reasons behind the downward sloping demand curve. Individuals maximize their utility subject to their budget constraint. As the price of a good rises, consumers buy less of the good for two reasons. First, because they substitute towards other goods. Second, because the price increase makes the consumers effectively poorer. And remember that supply curves capture the firm's willingness to supply the good. They slope upwards, since higher prices cause producers to want to produce more. For example, if you're Toyota and you could sell a particular car model for $100,000, you'll make a lot more of those cars than if you can only sell that model for $10,000. And now we also know the technical reasons for the upward sloping supply curve. Firms maximize profits subject to input prices and competition in the market. At higher prices, firms choose to produce at a point of higher marginal cost. And since marginal cost increases as production increases due to diminishing marginal product, higher marginal cost means more production. So we have a demand curve and a supply curve. And where the two intersect is the market equilibrium, where both consumers and producers are satisfied with the market outcome. Let's see how this works in an important real world market, the market for gasoline. This graph shows an example of supply and demand curves in the market for gas in the US, with downward sloping demand and upward sloping supply. Suppose that this market is in equilibrium at a price of $3 per gallon, with 14 billion gallons sold per month. What could happen to change this equilibrium? What could happen to make consumers or producers not happy with this outcome? For example, suppose it's the start of the summer and families are taking more vacations. The utility of driving rises because they have the opportunity to drive to a beach or an amusement park that wasn't open in the winter. Since the utility of driving rises, that means that at any given price, they now want to buy more gas. This causes an upward shift in the demand curve for gas. At any price, the quantity demand is higher than it was before the shift, hence the shift upwards. Now, at a price of $3 per gallon, consumers want 18 billion gallons of gas a month but gas companies are only willing to produce 14 billion gallons at that price. We find ourselves in a situation of excess demand. People want more gas than firms are willing to produce. What do firms do in response? They'll produce more gas to meet demand, but to do so, they have to charge higher prices. They are moving up the supply curve, producing at a higher marginal cost, so the price needs to go up too. In this case, the market settles into a new equilibrium in which 16 billion gallons of gas are produced and sold to consumers at a price of $3.50 a gallon. Gas companies are selling more gas to consumers at a higher price than before the summer driving season arrived. So the shift in the demand curve causes a change in price, which changed the quantity supplied. But notice that shift in the demand curve did not cause a shift in the supply curve. The supply curve doesn't change at all. It's still right here. Instead, the price change happens because the demand curve shifts and the equilibrium point is moved along the stationary supply curve. So we've just drawn one of many possible examples of a shift in the demand curve. The demand curve will shift whenever people's taste for driving changes for a reason other than the price of gas. Now let's see what could happen to cause the supply curve to shift. For example, suppose there's political turmoil in a major low cost oil producing country and it has to drop out of the market. This means the minimum average cost of the market increases, since the market has just lost a low cost producer. This raises the marginal cost of producing gas at each quantity, and it means firms require a higher price in order to sell a given quantity of gas. Marginal cost is higher, and price equals marginal cost. So the supply curve shifts to the left. At any price, the quantity produced is lower than it was before the shift. Again, we're in a situation of excess demand. Consumers still want 14 billion gallons of gas at the old price of $3 a gallon, but the firm's costs went up, and now they'll only produce 12 billion gallons at that price. Now, if consumers want gas, they'll have to pay more for it. But if they have to pay more, they'll want less. So they move up the demand curve to a point of lower demand at a higher price. 
In this case, the market settles into a new equilibrium in which 13 billion gallons of gas are produced and sold to consumers at a price of $3.25 a gallon. Gas companies are selling less gas to consumers at a higher price than before the low-cost oil producer dropped out of the market. When the demand curve shifted up because it was summertime, prices rose and the quantity of gas produced also rose. In general, the demand curve shifts up due to factors that increase demand and down due to factors that decrease demand. But when the supply curve shifted left because an oil producer dropped out, prices rose, just like in the case of the demand curve shift. But unlike in that case, the quantity of gas produced actually fell. Well, think about a supply curve shifting left due to factors that decrease supply. Think left is less. And that means the supply curve will shift right due to factors that increase supply. So you can't just ask what happens to price in a market. You need to know why the price changes, whether it's due to a shock to demand or a shock to supply, if you want to understand how it changes the equilibrium.